Hey you guys, it's Mimsy here. Today I'm going to show you how to make a lined drapery panel with buckram from start to finish. So let's get started. So the first step is to cut off the selvage edge of this fabric. I'll show you. On some fabric it doesn't matter so much, but on this velvet you can actually kind of see how the edge is a little bit drawn up and so it causes the fabric to ripple. Let me turn this down a bit. So you can see how the fabric doesn't lay flat, it ripples, and that's because the selvage edge is drawing up the fabric. So the first thing I'm gonna do is cut off the selvage on both sides. Now I need to determine the top and the bottom. Now with velvet, there is a nap on velvet. You can tell by running your hand down the fabric. You can see how it causes the change in color. So when you look at velvet, if you look at it from this direction, it looks one color. If you look at it from this direction, it looks either lighter or darker. So you have to make sure you run your fabric the same direction. I mean, with velvet, it's, it's just a slight variance in the, basically, the saturation of the color. The color is still green, obviously, but if you look at it from one direction, it's darker. If you look at it from the other, it's lighter. Obviously, if you have a patterned fabric, that's a whole different thing. Easy to tell the top from the bottom. Anyway, just make sure that you're running your fabric the same direction on all your drapery panels. So I'm going to turn it around, and that's going to be the bottom down there. And the first thing that we're going to do is put in the bottom hem, which seems odd that you put in the hem first, but when you're making a drapery panel, that's what you do. Put the hem in, put the side seams in, then you put the header. Um, so I'm going to flip this around and we're going to lay the lining on here and um, actually no, we're going to put the hem in, then we'll lay the lining down in and do the side seams. So I've got my hem folded up to the four inch mark on my ruler and a little bit wide and normally you would do this at your pressing table or your ironing board and you would press this in but because this is velvet we cannot press it there's my four inches and we're gonna go up another four and we're exactly four yes yes and still four. Okay, so now I'm gonna pin this all the way across. Which is not easy with this fabric because this kind of backing that's on this velvet is a little bit thick and it's actually hard to pin through. So it's all pinned. I'm going to take this over to my sewing machine and sew this. So here we are at my sewing machine. I've got my walking foot installed on my sewing machine so that my fabric won't shift under my presser foot and I'll have a nice flat seam. So if you have a walking foot, it would be a good idea to put that on to keep your seams nice and flat. Otherwise you're going to have shifting and I explain that in a whole separate video. So if you want to check out that video on what is a walking foot and why do I need it and if you don't use it, what happens. Check out that video. So I've got my drapery panel velvet laid on my table. The right side is down. Um, so this is the back side that's up. I have my lining set on top of my drapery panel and I've already obviously cut everything to the proper size. My lining has a hem in it. I did a double three or a double one and a half inch hem in the bottom of my drapery lining and I have that lined up with the bottom of my velvet drape. It is an inch and a half away from the bottom of the drape. You always want your lining to be up above the floor. You don't want your lining on the floor because you don't want to risk having your lining show out of the front of your drapes. If they were the same length, your lining would get dirty. You don't want your white lining on the floor because it would look gross and no 
time flat, but you also don't want it to show out the front of your drape. So your lining does not hit the floor. You put your lining above the drapery by an inch and a half. And now I'm gonna go ahead and pin my side seams. So we've already hemmed the bottom of the drape. Now I'm gonna pin the side seams and this is going to be a double one and a half inch side seam. So you'll take up three inches of your drapery. So now I'm just gonna pin this all the way down, making sure that your lining is all the way tucked under there. Okay, so I've got my bottom hem in and my side seams are sewn in and now I've got my drapery panel laid on my table. I'll show you the bottom. I need my finished length to be 93 inches. So I have my drapery panel lined up to the 93 inch mark and it is the same all the way across. I measured with my uh, plastic ruler so I know that my drapes will fall at 93 inches and they'll be level across the floor. You see I've got my side seams in and now I'm ready to install the header. And so I've got my buckram in there. Some people call it drapery crinoline, um, but this is buckram and it's actually pencil pleat buckram. I'm using it. I'm not going to do a pencil pleat header, but I'm using it because I had it. So I set that at the edge of my table. So this is the edge of my table and I set the buckram there and then I'm folding it over right at the edge of my table. So you see that's the table edge. I'm folding it over and let me put my camera down so that I can show you this better. This is the top of the drape and that's the end of the table and I've set my buckram right at the edge of the table and I'll hold it there and fold my drape over. Do that all the way across and then I'm going to fold that under again. Now this is my double four inch header. This piece that I'm folding under here is not quite four inches. You may notice that. So it's not going to come all the way up to the inside like it really should but and that's because this is my last drapery panel of four drapery panels that i made i ordered 12 yards of fabric or 12 yards of fabric was ordered and the the uh it wasn't continuous they sent me three yards and nine yards and the nine yards was not cut square so my fa my this panel is slightly shorter my cut length is slightly shorter than what i needed and so if if you don't have the exact cut length that's fine because you can make it up in the header i mean as long as that fabric is enough to tuck underneath here by a half an inch even or five eighths or an inch as long as you have enough in there that's that's fine does that make sense so your header your double four inch header let me see if you can see that yeah so the double four inch header would normally come all the way up to the to there but mine's a little bit short because my cut length was short so i hope that makes sense now i will go ahead and pin this all the way across and then we'll take this to the sewing machine and we'll sew, I'd like to sew right on this edge. That's why I make sure that my fabric is right up against the crinoline or the drapery buckram. Sew a seam there and that's it. Um, obviously you would press all this if it wasn't velvet, give you a nice crisp finish. And then you put in your drapery pins and I'll grab some drapery pins and show you what that looks like. Okay, so there's my drapery header all sewn down and this, these are the drapery hooks and they're very very easy to install. You, on velvet like this, it's a little bit more difficult because this velvet is super thick, but you just poke them in wherever it is. You decide however you want to hang them. If you want to hang them right at the top, you can do that and then your ring will show. Um, if you hang them down further like this, obviously your ring won't show and this will be, you know, up against your ceiling or whatever, whatever look you want. So you just poke them all the way in like that and then your ring goes on there like that that easy. So that's the gist of the lined drapery panel. It's very simple. There's uh, not a lot to it. Pretty straightforward, straight stitching. Um, uh, there's a lot of different ways you can make drapery panels. Everybody does them a little bit different. Um, some people make their lining in their drapery a tube, um, make the drapery a little bit shorter, and that way you have a return on each side. I don't 
do that way. I've done that way uh, many times and it, it, I just never great, get great results. If your lining or your face fabric is a little bit off square, then it just doesn't hang right. So this is the method I like, but um, there's a lot of different ways to do it. So if you're thinking about making draperies, but you're hesitant because you don't want to mess it up, just go for it. It's not hard. And if you, you know, if you mess it up, you can take it out and do it again. So um, you can have a beautiful home on a very tight budget if you're willing to put in a little bit, a little bit of elbow grease. So thanks for watching you guys. See you next time.